you know, what was the biggest mistake that you made in 2019? And, you know, it's kind of funny because, I mean, it's one of those questions where, like, you know, you – back in the day, I remember, like, when you're doing an interview, right, they, they would ask you, like, what's your biggest weakness? And then you would say, like, a weakness. It's really a strength. It's like, well, I really work too hard. You know, I really uh, – you know, I'm just – I just can't let it go. You know, <laughs> it's like the fakest answers or whatever. Um, but I was thinking about it, and I came up with sort of a counterintuitive answer. I mean, there's so many mistakes. I, somebody said that on stage. They're like, well, if you want to narrow it to just one, uh, you know, because it's so true. It's like over the course of a year – I mean, there's so many, um, you know, missteps and, and, and problems that occur. But the one that I came up with, which I thought was interesting, was I said that I didn't spend enough money. And, you know, that sounds kind of weird because a lot of people associate spending money with, you know, oh, well, if I – like particularly accountants, they kind of look at their income or, you know, their profit and loss statement. And they, they think like, well, I made, let's say somebody made, I made $300,000 last year. And if I would have spent an extra 100,000, I only would have made 200,000. But you know, it's, it's actually what I experienced last year, probably more so than ever before in my, my life as a business owner is the more money I spent, the more money I made. But you know, you have this inclination in your mind that, well, is that going to be true this time around though, right? Is If I spend this time, is it going to make sense? Is it going to be true? Um, you know, so when I look at last year, I spent sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000, you know, redesigning our office space, which turned out great, even more than that probably. I spent probably another $100,000 on new computers. We ended up hiring last year about 55 or so people by the end of the year. Um, I spent probably $75,000 on camera equipment and everything. And so it's not like I didn't spend a lot. But when I look at how much we made last year, you know, we did, we had our best year by multiples on every level. And I think we should have spent even more. I, you know, when I look back, I think, okay, you know, I should, we, if we could have spent even more, would we, would it really been possible to lose the way that things were going last year? And it really wouldn't. And I think, it's interesting as I round this sort of new year into 2019 and I think, yeah, but is that really true this time? So I was sort of faced with a decision earlier this week and I want to walk you through kind of how I thought about it and how I came to the decision to take action on it versus, and, and, and see if this is a helpful sort of frame of thinking. So we at our company have grown to, it used to be just Amanda and I in 2016 and 2017 it was Amanda and I and we had probably one full-time employee we call team member uh, and maybe 10 and 12 contractors. And then in 2018, we got up to 55 uh, full-time employees, 56, something like that. And, um, you know, that's a big change in operations and management. And so we've been looking for a really great operator, a really great COO that can take our company or can help us take our company. And you know, we know how to, I will say, I mean, we know how to make products, right? We know how to make products. We know how to do sales. Um, we know how to do marketing. But coordinating, you know, 30, 50, 75, 125 people, it's a new challenge that we haven't uh, faced. And so we actually joined um, a new program recently that works on sort of operational management. And I also, through going through that program, uh, spoke to a recruiting firm that does recruiting for executives. So they recruit, you know, executive level management. And, um, you know, when I was working with the guy, he did a great job. He said at the very beginning of the call, he said, um, just so you know, um, you know, outcomes for this call, right? So outcomes for this call, we're either going to love this conversation and how it went. We're going to say it's great to work with each other or, you know, we end up talking and it was a good conversation, but it doesn't seem like a good fit. We go our separate ways. But if we can't come to a decision at the end of the call, then really that means it's a no and we can just go our separate ways. So right from the beginning, he sort of put me in a position, which I love that I, you know, obviously recruiters are salespeople and, but I appreciate good tactic. Um, and he said that either it's a yes or it's a no, but I don't accept maybes. And I love that because I don't personally accept maybes. I, I, I hate maybes. Like, tell me no. Tell me no. Tell me you're not interested. Tell me it's not a good fit. But if you're here and we liked it, then let's do the damn thing. So I'm sitting on this call thinking, oh, my gosh. You know, this guy's putting me in this position where he said this thing. And if I, I would totally say the same thing to somebody, and I would want them to respect it. I have the need. I need this executive position. I'm on the phone with a recruiter. Clearly, I'm interested, right? And so I'm sitting there through the first sort of 30, 45 minutes of call, sort of gulping, like, oh gosh, what am I going to have to, what's the ticket price going to be on this? 
And it ended up being for the recruitment and the hiring of the person, it ended up being $70,000. And so I'm sitting on this call, realizing that I have the need, realizing that, um, you know, I want to make a decision on this call to respect his process, but also because that's the same process that I kind of use. And I'm realizing, oh, goodness, um, that's a, a decent ticket price. And so when I was on the call, I was kind of thinking about, and you know, so many times as humans, we like rationalize purchasing decisions after the fact, right? We don't really have like a logical decision-making process. Most people don't. Um, so I'll tell you what I thought about and what got me to the decision to actually go forward and do it. The question I asked myself was, if I would have paid for this last year in the year of 2018, and I could start with the solution on day one of 2019, would I do that? And so if I could take the $70,000 and I could go back six months, pay the $70,000, have the solution, have the executive, you know, uh, COO, would I do it? And the answer to me was yes. And so I thought, well, if I would have done it then, I mean, because it's, but it's uncomfortable now, right? Like today, when you have to make a purchase for something, be it, you know, new computer, like I talked to one of my clients, <laughs> she, she hired her first employee and $1,800, she bought her a computer. And in the first week, spilt coffee on it, ruined the whole computer, had to buy another one, right? So, you know, it's one of those things like, hey, I'm going to get my office, I'm going to hire these people. And, you know, for different people, it's different things. For you, an $1,800 investment might be a lot or a $5,000 investment or a $20,000 or a $70,000. I mean, for me, you know, the $70,000, it just felt like a lot. That being said, typically recruiters charge about 20% of fees. That That's kind of the range of this person's salary um, when you include potential bonus compensation and profit sharing and all these things. And so I was like, okay, well, that's not that far off. And I mean, really, how much cheaper am I going to go? And you know, if this problem gets solved, like the amount of efficiency that we'll be able to get, I mean, it's, it's, so it's totally there. And I thought, I thought about if I, I thought about two things. Okay, um, one, if I could take it last year, would I do it? And the answer was absolutely yes. In fact, I probably would have taken it from a number of other positions as well. Um, and then the other thing I thought about was, okay, well, how many times have I spent this amount of money in the past? And you know, for me, I've done it quite a few times. Like I said, my office, computers, equipment. I probably spent two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on mentors last year. Um, you know, coaches, uh, consultants, people that trained me, mostly to just think in a different way, but also some detailed tactics from a sales perspective, marketing perspective, product perspective, pricing perspective, management perspective, culture perspective, all these types of things. And so I, I used a variety of different people. So I thought, you know, this year I want to go. I want to double the company from where it is right now in this current year, and I want to triple the monthly sort of the high, the, sort of the monthly um, number by the end of the year, uh, the monthly revenue. And so, it ain't going to come without spending more money. You know, we kind of have this concept that at a certain point we don't have to take a risk, and we have to like it just is like well we're going to get revenue and growth without additional outflow. <laughs> <laughs> at least it feels like it should happen that way. But when I look at last year, I spent more money than I've ever spent, but I made more money than I've ever made. And so, look, this advice isn't for you if you're somebody who is just getting started and doesn't even have one client. But if you're somebody that's making 100,000 a year, you're making 250,000 a year income, by the way. Or you're making 500,000 a year, you're making 750,000 a year, you're making a million a year, you're making 2 million a year. Dude, you need to start spending some freaking money. And that was a really good thing I learned last year. But I could still feel my resistance on it last year and this year. And when you spend more money, it forces you to get more money. It forces you like, oh, you're like, my gosh, I got got all these expenses. Like, you know, I got to get sales. I got to get production. I got to get income. I got to get flow. And it is so true. And so I think whatever it is that you've been thinking about purchasing that you're putting on the fence that you're, uh, you know, Think of the bigger picture, longer term of your life. Would you, if you could have done it last year and have the solution, would you take it? What other things have you purchased? Um, and if you want to double sales, you probably need to spend twice as much on just about everything as you did in the past, at least. So, look, I hope that this video was helpful. Um, it's something that I'll even admit for me isn't something that I've fully overcome because I, I, I still have that resistance. I still have that fear. One final word I'll say on this is that. When I do spend a lot of money, whether it was on my office when I spent the sixty thousand last year, or or the equipment that was about seventy five thousand, or the mentors that was two hundred fifty thousand, all of those things, and I mean there was a lot of other things. We probably spent a couple million dollars on advertising. You know, whenever I spend a lot of money on something, I go into it assuming like being okay with getting nothing, right? And that kind of maybe an interesting frame of mind. But I go into it thinking, well, if I were to spend the seventy thousand dollars, like 
I'm just going to assume that I get nothing. And then if I got nothing, would I still be a happy individual? I might be disappointed that it didn't work out, but it's just going to like wreck my whole – I'm not like betting my whole life on this thing, right? And at the same time, go in trusting the process, doing the work, trying to get as much out of it as possible. So I go in with those two sides. Like one, going to trust the process, go in and, and get it and, and, and try to get as much out of it as possible. But then on the other hand, being totally okay with getting nothing. And I find that to be a very easy way to think about it. If I, if I have to make an investment that's so big that it has to work, otherwise I'm going to be crushed – or otherwise I'm going to be depressed or otherwise I'm going to be financially stressed, then it, I don't, it's not as easy or interesting for me to do that. But if it's something where you know, this could be one of the burns over the course of my life, but it has the potential to 3x, 5x, 10x, 20x ROI, um, I find that to be a helpful frame of thinking. So if it's an amount that if you lost it all, you would still be alive, you wouldn't be financially distressed, you don't have to take on any debt, and but it's something that could really make a massive change in your business just freaking do it just freaking do it and when it works do it again do it again do it again do it again and so i've been thinking about things i want to spend money on this year and i've got one other thing that i really want to go big on and and really get some help on and make a massive difference so look i hope that this was helpful um when I when I when I said the when I said this to the this group this woman came up to me afterwards she's like what are you talking about spending money because you know I'm thinking of spending money and she could only see expenses. She couldn't see ROI. She couldn't see return. And she just assumed that if I spend money, I'm just going to make less, right? It's like, well, yeah, I mean, sometimes, I mean, I've actually spent money and then lost money on top of that associated with a certain venture. But when I think about all the consultants I've purchased or all of the uh, training programs I've purchased or all the mentors I've purchased or all the assets I've purchased or all of the team members that I've you know, uh, hired, on the whole, man, do they ROI, man. Does all my education ROI? Now, an individual $5,000 purchase or $25,000 purchase here or there, does that like not work out? Yeah, of course. But on the whole, I mean, it's not even close. So I don't have any problem, you know, and again, remember what I said. If you haven't figured out how to make a profit, you haven't figured out how to create income, then you don't necessarily, you, you can't necessarily trust yourself because you don't know how to create prosperity. But for those of you guys out there, and there's a lot of you that do know how to create prosperity, that have a reasonable in revenue and take home salary and net profit on your business, dude, you need to start creating some flow. I think of the bank account like a pond and without more outflow, there's not gonna be more inflow. And so I wanna spend a lot of money. I was looking at a company over the weekend that does 4.4 billion a year in sales. They net 600 million. It's a publicly traded company, but I was just reading their 10K. And they spend $3.8 billion a year. Think about that. $3.8 billion a year they spend in expenses. Dude, if you want to – it's like how do you create $4 billion in sales? Well, spend $3.5 billion. <laughs> so it's, it's sort of funny. And you know, the, the change in thinking that I went through is – when you make that expense in one month, you need to fight like hell to make the return in that same month. Now for me, with this recruiting process, it's a multi-month process. So, and then when the guy gets, man or woman gets on, you know, comes on to work with us, we're not gonna make an ROI right away, but I can go out and make an ROI on the feeling of knowing that my business is going that direction, knowing that I'm making that investment, knowing that I had the guts and the courage to do it. And I can go out and I can get new cash, new opportunity, new sales, new clients, because that's exciting to me. And so if you start to think about it that way, even though you're outflowing in the same 30-day period, you can inflow higher revenue, higher net profit. And that's really what I did almost every single month next year. Even though I was spending more than I ever had before, I was also making more gross and more net. You don't have to like hire people and then hope that that works out and uh, you know lose money for a few months and then make more. No, 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 no. Try to make more in the exact same month as the expense and get creative with it because sometimes you're not going to ROI right away on it. Like this is something where I'm not going to ROI in the same two-week or four-week period because I got to go through the process. But if I can ROI on my excitement, on my energy, on knowing that that's coming, um, that's enough. So I hope that this was helpful and um, I look forward to talking to you guys soon.